So my last guest is someone that I've been looking forward to having come in for a while. I met him a long time ago, and I'm welcome. I'm happy to welcome back Chef James from the Midtown Oyster Bar in Newport. Chef, come on in. Look is that, at that. Is that my, is that my that, cube? That's your cube. Good to you see you. Pleasure. Good to see you. Good afternoon. Oh my lord. Whoa. Nope, she's right behind oh, me. Molly's good. Yeah. Look at this. This is amazing. This is like I'm starting at this point. Look I at can this. imagine you brought the whole uh, the neighborhood up. I know. Here, uh, <laughs> this is awesome. Newport today. I didn't expect to see Josh and. Uh, see, you got good people surrounding you down there. So I have to say is that we were talking earlier on the phone. Oh, look at that for a crowd. Seafood. Love that. Dry sauvignon. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so we have tasted here. Oh my gosh, absolutely. You don't have to ask me about that. I, as everybody knows, I'm the wine enthusiast. My new phrase that I have to put out there, wine enthusiast. Understood. So Chef Happy and I share. met a long time ago and haven't seen each other probably since then, is that you opened up a restaurant in Warwick with the Piscopio family, um, Ironworks Tavern, a long time ago, right? Ironworks Tavern, that's correct. So I had a shout out last night. I was at Harbor Lights in, on Warwick Neck. And it was a crazy night. I couldn't believe it. I ran into like 15 people I knew in five minutes. And the chef's name came up twice because I told people that I was having come in. First came up from the mayor, former mayor of West Warwick, so that he goes to your place on a regular basis, Mike Levesque. Yes. And then I ran into Lori Piscopio. So I'm giving you a shout out, Lori, appropriately, to tell the chef how much of you missed him and that you love him. So I did make sure that I got that message out there. So I'm glad to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time to come up for me. It's my pleasure. Thank so you. talk about what you brought in because this is like I'm drooling already of what you have here. This is okay. unbelievable. We have a Spanish octopus. This has been on the menu at Midtown Oyster Bar since day one. Uh, we buy six to eight pound species. We braise them for four hours just, uh, and then reheat on a char grill with some of our house spice rub. So it's simple. It's, uh, it's a hot preparation served over uh, room temp chickpea salad, okay. Mediterranean style preparation, lots of good olive oil, a little lemon, chopped parsley. Very simple, but uh, there's some TLC involved. Yeah, I can tell. And this is exactly the presentation of how it's served when it comes that, out, right? That is it. So and, you can't uh, get any more of knowing that this is a great octopus in the seafood right there. I mean, that's absolutely beautiful. We'll sell 100 pounds a week without that. Uh, really? Absolutely, yes. So I've got to say, because this is a wine that I love, this will be good everything. Cheers. It's a real pleasure to yeah. Mm. As I say, nothing wrong with that. It's a mm. veritable fruit basket. Every, oh every fruit in a... Love that. I'm looking at the chickpeas in this combined, and I'm like already ready to have some. Mm -hmm. Presentation-wise, this is stunning. So let's talk about what we got here. Look at that. Well, it's kind of a hybrid, uh, we call it uh, a hybrid paella. So it's uh, essentially a chipino or bouillabaisse base okay. uh, served in a paella fashion over Spanish rice, saffron rice with... Uh, Little green peas, and essentially the seafood components are uh, little neck lambs, mussels, shrimp, scallop, and calamari. Oh God, it's like a bed of deliciousness. It's <laughs> the, unbelievable. The sauce is uh, tomato broth with fennel, sweet peppers, saffron, a couple other little uh, aromatics oh in there. God, it's like everything I'm addicted to. So the rice, I have to ask you a question about the rice. Yes. Do you find that this rice is becoming more popular and guests enjoying it? Because it's an easy rice to mix with seafood dishes in general, right? Right, it is. That and risotto, which is, a, is an old staple. Yeah, but, it's a staple. Uh, but this is, seems like it's newer, that it's like more and more people are getting an understanding that, that this, this style of rice. Well, I'm not certain for sure. No? But, uh, no, but paella has been around for a long time, and yeah. uh, that's, that's a common pairing. So in regards to this particular rice, uh, I, I don't see anything modern or new about it. No, but, uh, okay. I, I, I've just I'll, seen it more that people are enjoying it. That's why I was going to question that. Because I love it. I've always right. loved it, but I just think it's in the past people weren't trying it. But it could be that my perception of people's uh, taste of it. So, Chef, being at Midtown, I want to first, so your, your menu is amazing out there. So I want to have you just kind of describe the menu that you've adapted over the time that you've been there. Certainly, sure. Uh, we have essentially a two season menu uh, with specialties that include. Uh, daily market goods that's year round okay. in terms of produce, seafood. Um, the summer menu, for example, uh, this is one of the new dishes that's uh, arrived summer 2017. We call it the seafood pan roast. Beautiful. And uh, well, thank you. Um, this is on the menu. In addition to our menu, we have, you know, we're a large oyster bar, uh, go through a, over a thousand on any given night, wow. plus. That doesn't include the clams and the shrimp and uh, all the other goodies. But uh, our, we have a blackboard or a daily special sheet that changes, um, and that will include up to a dozen varieties of fresh 
market oysters that are coming from the Pacific Northwest. Predominantly, we shop uh, in our backyard as much as we can. Right. We, we, uh, we, 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 we beat up Nittigrit Pond and uh, <laughs> Narragansett <laughs> Coast over there. Uh, uh, and these, these farmers are great because they hand deliver. Uh, then we have Island Creek out of Duxbury that's huge. They FedEx overnight and uh, oysters come in with uh, dry ice and uh, they're just, they're, we can hardly keep up with yeah, that, with the, with the volume that they take up. But uh, in addition to the, our daily sheet, um, we'll have, uh, during the summer, because we use so much volume of seafood, we're a huge seafood house. Not to say that we don't have a great steak or a mm -hmm. piece of chicken. Those those items are, uh, are we're very strong with uh, the, the grilled meats as well. But the seafood, uh, we run a fish box during the summer, okay. which is a daily whatever uh, market catch we have. Um, we'll be grilled, broiled, sautéed, or roasted, and that is paired with a rice, nonetheless. And the, the rice changes every day. We'll use this rice one day, for example, but predominantly uh, I've uh, reconnected with an old uh, vendor from years gone by called uh, Indian Harvest. Now they're in Harvest, and they have just a wonderful assortment of legumes, uh, ancient grains, and I can buy 10 different varieties. So I've just recently been uh, stepping up the fish box with some really wonderful uh, um, green medley, so to speak. So it sounds like you've got enough, I mean, granted you're doing a lot of locally sourced, but it sounds like you've got a great evolution that's constantly evolving as to what you're able to produce and put out there. Correct, yeah, yeah, I'd say. So your restaurant has, and I, I've only been in there, I have to be honest, I've only been in there and been at the bar for cocktail and an appetizer before going to a meeting. You've got a very sleek, awesome look to this restaurant. How, right. how old is the restaurant? Well, we are in our fifth season now, so we opened virtually July 1st, 2013. Okay. Uh, the building was brand new at that point. However, you look in, it has a, because there's repurposed wood and uh, finishings that lend itself to a, a, a look from days, days going by. It's right, not, a, not a modern, well, there are parts of the building, once you get in further in, if you've been upstairs, it's modern, it's wide open, oh, there's no, a vaulted ceiling. Okay. Please, please, next time in, uh, it's, it's it worth just going to see the view with the uh, there's a, there's a uh, we call it the Burgey Bar on the second floor. Uh, it's a great little uh, red lacquered walls that's uh, just the coziest little bar in town, I think. Uh, great for a Sunday brunch, off season. It's, it's great anytime, but in the, in the summer, we have three outdoors decks. One is brand new, it's barely open yet. It's not even open yet, but oh, so we have okay. two existing, a third one up and coming. Uh, that is part. Right, we got some more news. Third one up and coming. There you go. Part of an expansion right. expansion that we're going through. So. Awesome. When do you think that one's going to open? Uh, well, it should have been July first. <laughs> September first is okay with me. There's 60 more seats, so uh, that's so, going to be. So when that opens, how much is that giving you from a seating capacity during the you know the summer season? Uh, we ex anticipate another 50 to 60 seats here. It's a thousand square foot deck, so wow. uh, 15. Uh, square feet per person, give or take, and uh, that's you know, that's a big jump. It is, but in addition to that deck, uh, we're augmenting the firepower of the brand new kitchen. So uh, we've expanded not just seating like that's most a, that's restaurants That's a chef's dream when you can Absolutely, expand yeah. and you can expand the kitchen yeah. at the same time. Uh, we've got some that's new. Well, everything's new in the in the building, uh, um, and uh, the the uh, it'll enable us to do uh, just more high volume, more horsepower, so it'll be bigger, better, stronger, and faster. That's awesome. Yeah. So one of the things I was mentioning with my other guests is that when I kind of chose this title of a, a hotspot thing is that, to me, it's a combination of when you know that the restaurant in a tourism area, which you are, you're in a, you know, a seasonal tourism district area down there, that the restaurant has a year-round clientele, the guests that are coming in that are enjoying the restaurant. And in your time, I mean, it's five years is a great time because right. Restaurants, if you're going to make it, you got to get past a three-year mark, and then you know you're, you know, hopefully you can keep growing from there. Correct. And it sounds like, from your point of view, that adding the expansion of being outside, and you're you're adding to your kitchen within five years, which is like I said, a chef's dream to be able to keep the kitchen up with when you expand the restaurant. Um, it, it really sounds like that perspective. You know, you're on the success path, but also your commitment to Newport. The locals are loving you. Right. I mean, and that's the feedback. That, I mean, everyone that I said that I was bringing you on the show and inviting you on, like, oh my God, I love that place. Or, oh my God, I've been there three times. Or it, it seems like it's become this more, the older you get, this more it becomes this discovered gem. Right. Almost. Yeah. Um, so I, I have to say that congratulations, first of all, because I know your menu is what's pushing it out there. But the way you, you all have designed the space and done it, you've done a, a great job. So I think you definitely categorize as one of those hotspots down there. Thank you. Now, your background that you have is that 
this is something you've kind of evolved over time and done these different things that you've been in different restaurants. The menu down there that you're putting together, locally sourced has got to be a point of pride for you. Naturally, yes. Okay, good. Because this is what, and this is, we go back to this whole thing about locally sourced and keeping businesses going in Rhode Island and working them, and even outside of the state, it's important to, to support the, the local industry. From your perspective on the tourism side of things, obviously this time of year you go through the roof, right? right? Is there different seasonal times that you change? You mentioned that brunch, is that you guys serve brunch. I think right. you're the first guest that I've had that does brunch. Is it lunch as well? That's correct. We do lunch and brunch uh, at the same time. Okay, so you got the brunch, the lunch, and then dinner. How many days a week do you guys open? Well, seven, seven days. Seven days a <laughs> week? Lunch and dinner, seven days, yes. Now, is that year-round or is that seasonal? Year-round. There's no closing. Really? Well, Christmas. Cr oh, great. Okay. <laughs> we got to give you Christmas, chef. <laughs> yeah, that was No, funny. that's awesome. So seven days a year, or seven days a week. Yes. You've got the option builders, and the brunch is on the Sundays, correct? Correct. Okay. So you got the brunch on the Sundays, which i got to tell you, especially in the off-season, it's not an easy thing to find right. in Newport, especially in the off-season. This time of year, it's a little more frequent, but I would say that some of those people are not as accustomed to making a great brunch as I've heard that you have, as to, as to putting it out there. So talking about that, now there was something else that I heard there, a rumor. I heard a rumor. <laughs> tell me about this rumor that I heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think... I think we're referring to the Surf Club, which is a new oh, restaurant yes. that we've just uh, popped the cork on, so to speak, and uh, that's or, or the twist off top, but it's up and running. The Surf Club is uh, uh, in the Perry Mill building, which is directly uh, adjacent to the Midtown Oyster Bar, okay. which is uh, just off Dame Street, um, and it's uh, Surf Club. It's going to be a casual spot with great bar food and be another fine spot to watch the football awesome. game or come down with the family or. You know, the, the, the crowd will tend to develop itself over time, so it's yet to, we, we have an idea, uh, the demographic, what we anticipate, but uh, it's, uh, we're pizza, taco-centric, and everything beyond. So really? that's, our, that's our main staple. We're at the first phase of opening right now, and uh, it will develop. The, uh, we've just opened the outdoor patio to get our, uh, our chef and the team geared up. Kind of acclimated and, with it, yeah. And we'll, yeah, we'll build up uh, gradually, so. So the surf club. Surf Club. I love the name. So we can say that Surf Club is just now opening. It, it's brand new. Okay, so it's kind yes, of like sir. a soft opening. Get everybody used to it. Yes. All right. So yeah, you heard it. I heard this rumor. Chef and I talked about the Surf Club is open. Check it out. Don't swarm the place, but make sure you check it out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Go down and see it. Right. Congratulations. That's thank, fantastic. Thank you very much. And now it's so you said it's adjacent to the restaurant. Yes. Okay. Yes. So God bless. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's something new for you to check out. Now, is there information already out there about it? Has it been posted on the web or anything like that yet, or website? Uh, gradually, yeah. We're, we're, we're emerging, trying okay. not to get to overrun So if you need this. information, don't call the chef, but call the restaurant. They can kind of tell you about it, where it is to get over there. Yes. So, chef, one of the things that I remember about you when you came in is that your personality and also being able to talk to guests. Do you have that same opportunity at this restaurant to be able to intermingle with the guests at all? I stay fairly uh, closely changed to the range. So this is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's... it's uh, it, it's my place to do that, but right. people call me out. I'm just I'm comfortable in, in the public, and uh, I, I at this this uh, particular location, I'm not as highly visible as uh, gotcha. some well, folks you got would like. That you got to deal oh, with it's too. it's uh, it's a bear. It's it's uh, so I stay I stay on it. Excellent. So now you know that he's paying attention in the kitchen. That's important. So your manager Charlie correct sent me this great list, and we spoke on the phone about talking about your cocktail list and your wine list and stuff. Right. And because of the style of the food that you have coming out, he said that it's heavy on um, by the glass selections for right. people, for guests to be able to enjoy. So I have to say that that's somewhat unique because a lot of the places that you're going into that are trying to do a similar style of enjoying the seafood, they're pushing you more towards the bottle selection and trying to do that. Right. So I, I have to give you guys credit for that and mention that. From what I looked at on the list is that, I mean, there was French wines, there was white uh, California wines that I saw, um, there was wines that were um, Italian wines that I saw in there. So from the variety of being able to have by the glass and be able to try something like this, there's a awesome thing to pair up the wines because I could tell you I would have three different wines with one dish alone to try something. So something I want to give them credit for because you don't, unfortunately, it's just not out there enough to have a big enough glass selection by the glass selection. Correct. But also cocktails and their, their beers. There's some craft beers. Great beer list, so congratulations on that list because I think that's an important thing to be able to let guests enjoy with your with your style and anything that's putting out there. So the last two questions that I'm usually putting out there, Chef, is two. It's a two-part question. So it's one is what is something that you know you suggest on your current menu, guests coming out there from now till the end of the summer, say, what's something that they shouldn't miss on the menu, 
And the other part is from your specialty, things that you personally enjoy to be making in the kitchen that comes out of that. Okay. Um, since we are such a big seafood house, I, I, we, we buy from premium uh, purveyors, first of all. So I have uh, fish coming en route from Honolulu right now. I've got really? four varieties of fish that have never been on, in, I won't say they've been in the market, but they've not been on our menu this weekend. Uh, it'll, it'll arrive tomorrow afternoon and we'll uh, fillet it, prepare it. And uh, we're, monkfish liver, for example, is, is coming, and we have uh, uh, walu tuna, which is a white white tuna. We have nice. uh, a, a extreme grade. There's there's 20 different grades of uh, uh, yellowfin tuna. So there's a number one ahi, and that's that's coming in, which will all hit the uh, the crudo raw bar crudo uh, oh menu God, this weekend. Amazing. Yeah, and uh, so the versa the diversity of the seafood that it, it's it changes every day we you said what do I like the best I like something that's new that we get to experiment with uh, we sell tons of swordfish and tuna and salmon but it's uh, that's that's common market to me so I do appreciate right. seeing something having something new come in that we can experiment with and, yeah and and treat uh, our, our, our client patrons to as well so one of the questions that I had, and I know I said there was the last one, I'm going to let him have a sip of wine before I go ahead. No, sip of wine, good. I got a, there was one question I got from someone that had to do with this weekend, and that it's jazz festival happening in New York this weekend. So it's an insanely popular, busy weekend, and I believe the festival is sold out at this point. Um, is it, do the events like that, do they have a giant impact beyond the regular tourism season? No, I mean when you're at 100 percent, you're at 100 percent. So uh, there's there's uh, there's there's only going down, you and, like, yeah. and uh, you know you're, we're hanging on the cliff right now. We're looking forward. That's like Columbus Day. There'll be a little, you know, a luff in the air around uh, after Labor Day, but it's it's strong season through October, mid October. Excellent. Well, I have to say, I'm happy that you're in this great spot because you've done incredible things for them. It's a beautiful restaurant. I look forward to going back to it. So thank you again for making the time to come down from Newport today and join us. Thank really you for having it. me. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Sean. Good to see you. Likewise. Good afternoon. Great wine. All right. So I'll be, I'll be leaving that. Oh, shall, I, shall I pack this out? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't mind, that's fantastic. Yeah, of course. The wine is yours. Thank you, Sean.